Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are here up at the production area of the nursery. Wanted to give you some updates on just kind of the behind the scenes, you know, day-to-day -day activities that we have been up to. And we are gonna go take a tour through the production area. We have got some fantastic um, perennials that I want to show you and hydrangeas. Oh my goodness, they are blooming as are the butterfly bushes. So we wanna highlight all those fantastic things that are growing blooming and thriving here in North Carolina zone 7b um, the beginning of July you know this is where we're getting into the gardening it's like everything's blooming and just having a good time of course there are those gardening pests and troubles that we have to deal with but it is all worth it because of both of those gorgeous blooms. So here we are in, this is the dry storage area. If you remember um, back in the fall when we took down the two greenhouses that were at the retail section of the greenhouse, um, we dis disassembled them and brought them up here and then put them together as one giant um, structure and we use this as dry storage it has just a white poly covering on it and so we can drive the machinery in here uh, jerry can get the bobcats and the um, the work truck everything will fit in here they have organized all of this and it just looks i am a girl i am a sucker for organization when things are organized it just makes my brain happy um, and it is looking fantastic up here so jerry and the crew worked for like a day day and a half and got everything cleaned out organized wrapped up so now we know exactly what we have going into the fall um, and for the other seasons to come they also have been working their little hearts out and gotten the two greenhouses completely empty so here we are production one remember this is we say production one because it was built first um, has no heat source to it so it truly is just like it's a cold frame and then the heat comes from the sun itself um so this is where we had lots of um, baskets and the floor was just covered in annuals and some perennials so it is nice and completely empty and weed free so that's really fun and now moving into production number two um it too is cleaned out as far as the bottom so everything is nice and out of here oh, it's a clean slate we do still have hanging baskets that are in here um, we keep them up here because these are still the same ones that we had planted back in the winter uh, but they have been trimmed back and they are getting fertilizer we've got some gorgeous medusa sweet potato vine hanging baskets uh, so this is they're still going they're still on irrigation they're on fertigation remember the fertigation is um, where you send fertilizer through the irrigation system uh, so jerry has all that figured out and they are getting fed regularly so that they can rejuvenate and be pretty and be for if you need something in like late summer or early fall they will be great here we have the production area uh, most of it is shrubs so shrubs are kind of to my right and then this section here is going to be all of the perennials in the the sun loving perennials in the production zone and then further down we have the mums so we will check on the mums because i was driving by the other day and you can see their little heads are poking up above the pots and they're just growing and just being really happy so we're just going to kind of start on the end and go through because i want to share with you um, some of these may be new some of them to you or maybe um, you have them in your garden you know we're just going to go through them so first of all we have the um this is a nephophia you may know it as a red hot poker however it's not red is it this is backdraft this is part of the pyromania series from proven winners um, i really like this series it's really fun because they come in all these colors backdraft is, has that ombre effect where they start out with well your new buds are nice and orange and as they age they'll turn to a, a nice pale kind of a creamy vanilla yellow color um, but these are great perennials in zones like five to nine the pollinators love them the bees love to get their little honeys up in these um, in these flowers and just go to town on it it does benefit when you have an old spent bloom like this to deadhead it so what you do is when you deadhead is you take your stem and you follow it down as far as you can go down into the foliage like right here 
and you would just trim it right there. Um, that way you don't have an obvious, you know, if you just cut it right here, then you're gonna have a stalk that's gonna turn brown. It's just gonna be unsightly. But if you do deadhead on a regular basis, and when I say regular basis, I mean like once a week, once every two weeks, right? I don't mean every day, but just go out there and clean up the plant. It'll be really happy. And this is an evergreen for us in zone 7B. So in the winter, it looks like a grass that you have in your garden. Really fun, of course, like I said, all of these are gonna be full sun. We've got Babtesia. I'm not, not sure which variety this is. Jerry, do you know? I think I'm gonna do the tags were missing. So the tags were missing, so guess what? It's going to be a mystery plant. And <laughs> we have a couple of those around here. Uh, tags and plants don't always arrive at the same time, and so that can be an issue. But um, Baptisia, no matter what the color is, is a wonderful plant. It is an early spring bloomer, and it will do these stalks. So if you see this right here, if you see these, these are the pods. This is what the bloom was. This is where the bloom was. Um, if that's unsightly to you, of course, you can trim that off. Um, it, they won't spread seeds. So don't think that just because it's a seed pod, it's going to spread seeds. Early spring bloomer, they can be in blues and yellows and pinks and creams. Lots of different colors. Penstemon. This particular one is um, black. Blackbeard, and it is a great pollinator attractor, an early bloomer. This is from Walter's Gardens. So we have Blackbeard, and then we have the Proven Winners one um, down a little bit further. Blackbeard is going to be taller, so it's going to be a little bit bigger of a presence in your garden. You can absolutely do the Blackbeard and the Beyond Midnight from Proven Winners and mingle them because you're going to have different levels. But nice, deep, dark foliage on it with beautiful lavender blooms. And Penstemons are hardy in zones 3 to 8. So extremely cold hardy. And like I said, great pollinator attractors. Butterfly bushes. We have got, this is the Cascade series from Walters Gardens. We've got Cascade Pink and Grand Cascade. So Grand, uh, Cascade Pink is a really soft baby doll pink, um, really a light, beautiful, soft color. So if you want to go with those cooler colors, that would be a great one. And then the Grand Cascade is kind of a perfect lavender color. But the, what's fun is with the Grand Cascade and the, well, the Cascade series is that you can see they come up and how they get their name, right, is they cascade over. So they have that weeping effect as opposed to the Miss series from Proven Winners, which is very upright and very vertical. This will come up and then weep over. Again, a beautiful different kind of contrast. You absolutely can mix and match them in your garden because they have very different looks in there. And roughly, um, butterfly bushes are hardy in zones five to 10. There you go, folks. I think that just covers practically the whole country. I know my cold people in four and three, sorry. Uh, <laughs> But the, the Cascade series is going to be roughly in that like five foot um, height, but seven to eight wide. So really make a nice big presence in your garden. I better put my tag back before I forget which pot it was in. Um, let's see. Lavender. We are, we are testing out lavender. Uh, we struggle in the south with lavender. I'm just going to tell you, we, we struggle. It is the struggle bus for sure um, because we're so stinking hot and humid, not only during the day, but at night. I mean, if you're in the south, you know our nights can be even muggier at night than it is here in the morning. Right now in the morning, it's like 930, and it's not that bad. Like, I'm not just sweating standing here. Maybe 930 at night could be a different story. Um, we're testing out... One, this is um, phenomenal. The plants came to us a little bit stressed, so we're kind of working through that. But phenomenal is an English lavender. I want to put this in the landscape um, to test it out because I've, I've been very open with my struggles with sweet romance from Proven Winners because our so clay soil just holds too much water. Um, but phenomenal is supposed to do better in the south. Um, hardy in zones four to nine, so even you northern folks can do this. And it's gonna be about almost three feet tall, but nice and wide, up to like four feet wide. Wide. So that's really fun and it is a beautiful plant and just standing here like I can smell it like it smells phenomenal and it's getting ready to bloom um, but you can see we have some areas that have just 
have died. Um, we'll see, it will not kill the, the overall plant, but it sure isn't very, you know, attractive. But that's how we roll here at Creekside. We give you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything in between. Um, a new different geranium for us, perennial geranium, this is New Hampshire Purple. Um, let me get one, it would help if I had one that had a bloom on it. Um, so perennial geraniums are really fun. So um, there are tons of different ones. They are, um, huh? Yeah, I know, I know. So it's, a, um, I'll try to hold down. So a nice, kind of almost like a pinky purple. Um, it's not like a really, <laughs> what I would say purple purple is, hardy end zones four to eight. It's gonna be 12 inches tall and 15 inches wide. So here we have New Hampshire purple, and then we have one from Proven Winners, which I really like, it's Boom Chocolata. I don't have any experience with this one yet. That's why I don't, it's not, I don't like it, I just don't have any experience. Boom Chocolata has really dark foliage, really nice, blue to purple flowers on it um, and it will have a nice habit to it. I actually put three of these in the Gatsby Gal bed and they are doing really, really great. Remember when you're planting your perennials, um, in my opinion, when I'm planting my perennials and my shrubs and my trees, my goal for my first year of them being in the ground is to keep them alive. Just keep them alive um, and then because all the action is happening down here in the roots, when they're in the ground, then year two, they kind of wake up and they're like, oh, this is fun. I like my new home. And then they start to grow. And then it's year three where they just absolutely explode. But Boom Chocolata, again, is hardy in the four to eight and will be about two feet tall and not quite three feet wide. So it'll, it'll spread out really nicely. Um, just a real nice continuous bloomer. And then here is the Sweet Romance from Proven Winners. You can see it's got beautiful foliage on it nice pretty blooms we're at the end of the bloom cycle here so what we really need to do and i have this in a container at the house i'm going to do that as soon as i get finished filming here today is i'm going to come in and you collect all your buds like this and you come in and you snip it give it a haircut that will help rejuvenate it and you want it to come come back and look a little bit like this we're deadheading right we're deadheading the plant and help it to encourage it to bloom more um, but again fantastic eucharas this is evening, evening gown there's the tag evening gown eucara um, is a great perennial extremely hardy in zones four to nine so very versatile evening gown is in my opinion an improved version of black pearl it has bigger leaves on it i mean that like if you put a black pearl and an evening gown beside each other the difference is noticeable. I mean, it is really in the size of the plant. Um, it can do sun or shade. Here, where it gets full sun, it has more of a little bit of a purpley red tone to it. When you put it out um, more in the shade, it has that black look to it. And of course, eucharas will bloom. They're grown for their foliage, but they will bloom. When you have a bloom that's done, again, come back down, just like you did with your um, your nephophias and trim it. And then you have that beautiful foliage. But these little bell flowers, pollinators do love that, especially the little honeybees. And this is part of the Velosa species. So it does really well in our Southern climate. Um, we said four to nine, so versatile. Banana cream too. So you may look at the banana cream too, Shasta daisies, and you're like, Jenny, they don't look so good. Yeah, well, there is a little maintenance involved with your Shasta daisies. Um, our Shasta daisies in the landscape are getting ready to be done with their blooms. Um, in fact, I did this yesterday with my um, Daisy May because if you remember those pictures, it was huge and gorgeous and covered in gorgeous blooms. I did not go out there and individually deadhead. That would have helped and made the plant look better over the extended period of time. Life happens and it just didn't work out. So my plant, my overall plant was looking like this with the old blooms. So what I did is I again, collected them all together and I trimmed them back. They will rebloom. Um, if you are more faithful and you're out there as a bloom gets spent and you clip it, it will, you will have more of a continuous bloom. But in my case, and I've done that in the past, this time it just didn't happen. Um, but you do want to deadhead your daisies. Banana cream too is really fun. Starts out a soft buttery yellow and ends up as a white. And 
hardy end zones five to nine and they're going to get a beautiful big presence especially if you plant them in mass oh absolutely stunning and then oh my gosh y'all while i'm down here might as well just stay right um this is uh, the part of the luminary series. This is opal essence. This is a phlox. This is when they are blooming this time of year. So phloxes will bloom at different times, right? You have your creeping phlox that's early spring. Then you have like a, a mid to late spring. Here we have summer. So the luminary series, first of all, they're beautiful colors. Opal essence clearly is a very soft, pink um, very very pale pink with a nice little bit of a darker center has a delicious smell to it the first time i smelled it it reminded me very much of a gardenia um, but they will get nice and tall so they have big presence in the garden they're more narrow and upright than wide um, they are hardy in zones three to eight now these are more resistant to powdery mildew i didn't say they're completely resistant i said they're more resistant so when you plant your flocks you want them in full sun minimum of six hours of sun give them room to breathe don't crowd them up next to a bunch of other plants they need that room to breathe the air to circulate especially for us in the south with our hot humid nights again if you're here you understand what our nights are like um, we just don't cool down and it's wet and that's when um, when your plants are under stress, they're more susceptible to powdery mildew. So make sure they stay well watered and they're fed. You don't need to use a liquid fertilizer, just a slow release, right? Like your plant tone. Fantastic for perennials. Echinacea. We've got all sorts of fun echinacea coming down through here. This is the Sombrero series. So if the echinacea here is in a black pot, that means that it's going to be probably it's going to be the Sombrero series. Um, if you remember just the other day, I planted five different varieties of echinacea in the garden. This is when they bloom. This is when they shine and the pollinators go nuts over them. It is in the morning and the flowers are wet. The pollinators really haven't woken up yet. They like it when it's nice and hot, um, but they will just cover these blooms. Absolutely love it. Sombrero series is great because it's big, bold colors. So if you like the bold colors, go for the sombrero. This is the adobe orange. Um, catmint this is lesser catmint beautiful white blooms now i do have honeybees already over this so they're waking up and coming on down to the nursery uh, and huge pollinator attractor it, it's very tall and wispy so that's fun uh, we've got apache rose grass so do you remember those two large grasses that i have in the gatsby gal bed that's apache rose so apache rose again upright columnar, not really wide. Um, they are going to be hardy in zones four to nine. They can get four feet tall and not quite three feet wide, but a beautiful green foliage on it. I love perennial grasses. They bloom, they blow in the breeze. They bring a different texture to your garden. And then they will put on like little pink um, seed heads later on in the season. Lots of fun. We have some ruby spiders. We've got, oh, some Shalom peony display. So those of you that were asking about Shalom, um, wasn't this discontinued? Yeah, so Shalom peony display is a daylily. Um, it has been discontinued because it just was a little, I think, hard for them to propagate um, on the, for the demand that was needed. So if you are looking for this Fantastics, one of my absolute favorite daylilies from Proven Winners, um, we've got a few while supplies last. We've got them, so come get them. Um, daylilies, of course, do love, love the sun. Love, love, love the sun. Um, alliums, onions. We've got onions. This is a great one from... Um, this is lavender bubbles from Walters. Nice, thicker, um, more wide blades on it than say like the Serendipity from Proven Winners. Big, huge, oh, do we have that one? Oh yeah, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here. Um, so that way you can see, and there's not a massive difference, but there is a difference. Can you see how Millennium that millennium no lavender bubbles good gosh lavender bubbles is taller than the serendipity um so again mix them use them both in your garden in different applications um, but both of these are wonderful 
as pollinator attractors. The honeybees just absolutely love alliums. So here we have more of the echinacea. We have the red. This is the salsa red from um, Sombrero. We've got one of my favorites is the gold. Jerry really likes the gold. It's, uh, it's not quite what I call a big bird yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a more muted, a little bit of orange in there. Really nice, really pretty. Um, we do have the big bird yellow right here. <laughs> it's not called big bird yellow. It just is that color. Um, this is yellow improved. And these are the ones, remember, that I planted all throughout the backyard beds. Um, really fun, great color. This is a way to extend your garden. Don't think just spring, think four seasons. And so by doing echinacea, that is a great way to do it. Now, talking about earlier, um, sometimes that plants don't come with tags and that's kind of like the mystery plant. Back in the spring, when we ordered our hen and chicks, they accidentally sent us perennial like ground sedum. Um, there's no tags on it. I'm sure I could go back and like look on their website and figure out who is who, but so there's no tags, we'll figure it out. Um, but these are beautiful, um, sedums that are going to be for the ground. They are perennials. Again, we'll have to figure out what their exact hardiness is, um, but we'll give a nice tall presence. They will bloom in the fall. Lots of different kind of fun colors. So you can see this texture versus this texture. Very different, right? Um, mix and match them. These tend to be your perennial sedums will be um, more of a fall interest. Obviously, there's a, a lot of interest right now in them, but the true interest comes in the late fall. Um, I think, I'm not sure if this is the same one. I don't think it is. I don't know. Anyway, we have a couple of those. Um, and then we have, this is the Proven Winners um, Penstemon that I was telling you about. This is, oh, not, I don't know what I called it. I think I said beyond midnight. It is midnight masquerade. Um, so midnight masquerade, these are done blooming. So you can go ahead and deadhead them. That will be perfectly fine. Uh, they are hardy in zones three to eight and about three feet tall. Um, so there's lots of fun options as far as perennials. And let's go look really quick over here at some butterfly bushes because they're gorgeous. We're gonna back up just a little bit because there's a, a path that we can walk through right here. So um, butterfly bushes have a distinct smell, fragrance to me. I like it just because it reminds me so much of summer. So we've got Miss Molly is a beautiful raspberry. It will be, remember, upright. That tall four to five foot range. Beautiful raspberry colors. I mean, it's just fantastic plants, really nice. Then we have the Pugster series, and the, this is Pugster Blue. This is what we had planted at the church. Um, I showed you that in one of the videos. They are loving life there. Um, butterfly bushes tend to like to be neglected. They don't want fertilizer. Don't compost them. Heaven forbid, don't give them too much water because they'll drown. Um, so they're fussy in the fact that they don't like to be fussed over, which is really nice. Uh, the pugsters are gonna be basically a two by two and uh, um, the butterfly bushes basically are hardy in zones five to nine. So very adaptable, massive pollinator attractor. And then look at this bloom on pinker. So this is pugster pinker. This is my hand and look at that bloom. So it, pugsters will have um, short in stature, but huge fat blooms on them. So really nice. And I like the pinker. Um, let me show you the difference between pinker and pink. Uh, pinker is the new one and obviously it's pinker than pink, hence the name. Um, but you can, I'll put these down so that Jerry can kind of um, zoom in on them. So that way you can really tell the difference between pinker and pink. Pink is very light pinker just is richer. Um, it, there's not a, a right or a wrong or a better or a worse. It is what is the application that you're using it and does it fit into your color scheme at your garden? Um, butter, uh, not butterfly bushes, the um, 
hydrangeas. I think we're going to come back and do a video just on hydrangeas. Uh, so that way we can really spend some time comparing, you know, what say an Incredible to a Bobo or a Firelight to a Limelight. So we're going to go back, come back through um, here probably next week and have that video for you because they are coming into their own and they're gorgeous. And so we want to really kind of give you an overall view of, of each of the different hydrangeas so that you know maybe which one is the best one for your garden. Um, but as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.